Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Monaco for SiliconANGLE, the Cube's coverage of the Monaco Crypto Summit. I'm John Furrier, your host. We're here with Al Berger, the founder of the Digital Bits blockchain. Digital Bits is presenting this an open ecosystem. They're the main presenters, bringing everybody together. Al Berger is the man of the hour. Al, great to see you. Cube alumni, great to see you again. John, thanks. Thanks for having me back on the show. It's so, been, been a long, so been a while. So this is an inaugural event. Yeah, I mean, you, you and your team put together the Digital Bits Foundation. Um, the digital blockchain is enabling technology. The proof is in the pudding, as I always say. Now you're seeing companies building on top of the ecosystem. Why Monaco? This is an inaugural event. What's going on here? What's the motivation? What does all this mean, all this stuff coming together? Share. Uh, why Monaco? I mean, there's, uh, it's part of this next chapter. For us, things are happening in Monaco, and, and um, um, we've yet to unveil that, and we thought, you know, what better place to unveil what we're doing in Monaco other than to do it in Monaco. So that was really the genesis of what gave birth to this idea to have uh, the Monaco Crypto Summit. Um, but that evolved uh, beyond just sharing the nexus of it all. Um, there are organizations that here that have come from all over the world and will be sh sharing for the first time how they're also utilizing the digital bits blockchain. Not bad to come to Monaco in the summer though. It's Pretty, pretty nice area yeah, here. Beautiful views, yeah. <laughs> Summertime in Monaco is always great. But this inaugural event, first of all, I love the name, so congratulations on the name. I think it's got a lot of legs to it. I think this will be something that's going to be around for a long, long time, so it's a good, good call there. Um, there's a lot of other dynamics going on. Prince Albert's got some involvement. He's interested in crypto. We're going to hear more about that uh, in the Yacht Club presentation later tonight. Um, you got startups, companies building on top of the capabilities of digital bits. Um, you know, you and I have talked in the past on theCUBE about the technology. Um, you're a technologist, uh, followed a lot of your ventures, successes and exits, multiple exits uh, in tech. Silicon Valley knows you, everyone knows you now around the world. It's kind of like a cloud game, but it's decentralized. You've got infrastructure, platform, applications. Um, there's super applications and decentralized de DeFi to all kinds of new stuff going on. So you have a stack kind of going on here in a de decentralized way. And, been validated by all the big names jumping in and changing their business models. Andreessen Horowitz, you name it. Now a global financial market's converging on this huge opportunity around crypto and dApps. Everything's happening. So what's your reaction to this as someone who's been through many cycles, built companies and sold them and been successful? What's your analysis? I mean, this journey is done different and it has unique, uh, some similarities, but definitely some unique characteristics in prior journeys uh, in, in you know, venturing off to found a company and so forth. You know, for me, it's been obviously the traditional way. Um, you know, prior to this, uh, obviously it was in the Valley and, and um, had uh, uh, quite the journey. Um, what I would say this time it is um, with all that's happening in blockchain and cryptocurrency, it's uh, the amount of say capital formation, the amount of people involvement in into an early technology, into an evolving technology, and there's various subcategories now mm -hmm. across NFTs, metaverse, and um, and all things fungible. Um, there's a global stage immediately, and um, and it sort of creates this, these sort of mini vortexes of getting more people involved. Um, it's it's kind of uh, um, you know, some semblances of like the dot com bubble in a sense, mm -hmm. but with a much bigger ecosystem. Um, in, in comparison to, yeah. to what we saw in the 90s. Um, the thing about blockchain is that it, it, it needs to, the more successful blockchains out there need to evolve into becoming as decentralized as possible. And so as to use your analogy of stack, I mean, it is incredibly important to have contributors um, at all layers, uh, protocol layer, um, application, dApp layer, um, in many corners of the world. Um, but it all starts with an idea, so it's, it's really hard to go from point A yeah. to point B, um, like any other um, new opportunity. And so for us, it's been a journey. We're evolving in this next chapter, um, and a lot of that will be um, evident today throughout the course of the summit. We start to see and start to feel even more so yeah. how uh, the digital bits ecosystem is, is yeah. becoming more and more decentralized. We're going to see a bunch of folks coming on at a off stage. They're going to come here, and sit down on the queue and chat with me about their opportunities. How would you describe for the folks watching now what's going on on stage here all day? And then 
obviously the VIP gala tonight at the Yacht Club with Prince Albert in attendance and his team and a bunch of you know, big power players. What's happening here? What's the, what's the vibe? What's the purpose? What's being presented? Can you just quickly share, uh, take a minute to explain what's going on? So relative to, to the summit, um, it's you know, organizations, uh, platforms, um, there's, there's uh, uh, a few metaverse uh, platforms here that will be, um, I mean, they've been in, in existence, but they'll be unveiling um, their connection and how they're leveraging the digital business blockchain for the very first time. And so, um, but also other categories as well. Even um, the, um, you soon hear massive multi-billion dollar real estate development all coming to um, the digital yeah. blockchain. So this is the physical world. Yeah. Massive uh, resort, um, real estate development, completely being tokenized. You guys had some success in digital assets. Obviously the Roma team, I saw the announcement on, on YouTube was pretty big. Um, you get digital bits in the jersey, you got a new player, so caught my attention. Um, you got sports teams, you got here, you got applications. People are building on top of digital bits. Why? For us, it, you know, vision is, needs to be supported by a strategy. Um, from inception, it was finding ways to take an enterprise go-to-market strategy. And, and uh, some of it may be a bit of trial and error in the early you know, onset from, from 2017, 18, when, it, when the journey kind of began for the digital bits blockchain. But um, also part of it is timing. And one of the things that we saw more recently, again, kind of like the journey and the stack you were referring to before, um, nobody foresaw the pandemic. Nobody foresaw that the whole world would be at home, staring at a screen, <laughs> um, and figuring out what to do with their time. And many of the world, for the first time, began to learn about blockchain and cryptocurrency for the first time in the onset of this pandemic. Yeah. And so that became a huge accelerant um, for the space. And so um, another quote you know, I, I've, I'll take away from you that I you know, recall you saying many years ago, um, you need to have a horse in the track to be in the race. Yeah. We yeah. were very fortunate to have a horse in the track by having already a number of years of, of development, um, awareness, so that when there's kind of like these market shifts that can become an accelerant, um, we're in a position to, to um, move with the industry. Um, and so it's been an incredible couple of years. Timing was great for you guys. Yeah. And so, there, you know, there's different contributors in the ecosystem, some, some that I'm affiliated with that have done uh, things uh, in the sports space um, and other things that I'm not affiliated with. Um, there's a lot of things that, um, uh, again, are emerging today that are happening in different categories or themes of metaverse, for example. Um, and I'm humbled by it just simply by the vir virtue of the fact that they're utilizing the digital bits blockchain, but I had no um, stake in building what they've built in terms well, of their platform so, you know, you're and an, I mean, this so. is an enabling technology, so just to kind of pivot off, you said, yeah, the pandemic was a tailwind now for um, this mo movement for many reasons. One, people sitting at home, boy, hey, this is technically, hey, let's work on the blockchain. Two, the future of work, or the future of how things are organized is, was remote work. Remote work is like next door neighbor to decentralization. <laughs> like, I mean, come on, you're talking about people going, this is not, the future is not where it used to be. Mm -hmm. so that kind of galvanized a lot of people. And also the business models have shifted. So now post pandemic, everything's hybrid, which is virtual physical. So that's the perfect storm. So total acceleration, agree. Um, and we're seeing the traction. Now, you, what's interesting about what you guys are doing is you're enabling people to build apps on it. That's the platform. And, and, that's, and that's, again, what I want to ask you is, I had people always ask me, what's digital bits? So I'm going to ask you, what is digital bits? Well, digital bits is both the name of a blockchain. Um, it's also the name of a cryptocurrency, the native cryptocurrency of the digital bits blockchain. And so um, it began 2017 as a fork of Stellar in terms of the uh, original uh, repository. Um, and, you know, it was a question I was asked earlier today in, in, uh, in a press conference of, like, oh, there's all these blockchains. Well, we're still in this, like, early stage, uh, this early part of this uh, evolution. And so uh, I, I don't necessarily see a lot of what's happening out there as competitive, but rather complementary. Because in unison, you know, there's different use cases, different categories 
uh, where kind of a blockchain can find um, uh, its array of adoption in, in this sort of phase of it all. Um, for us, um, we've been referred to as a few different things, one of which is you know, uh, the aspiration to become this blockchain for brands. I think today we'll learn that it's become much bigger than that in yeah. terms of its capability. It's not necessarily that um, it's as a result of new technology. It's the tech, a lot of this technology has been there. It's just how it's being exploited and used. Um, we're unveiling today, for example, and part of now this chapter for me is working with um, community um, uh, hold developers. On, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on sorry. before you get there. So, okay, I see Digital Bits. I love the name, by the way, so thanks for that. You kind of get into the news now. You have a press conference. Take me through the press conference. What's the news? What are you guys announcing here today? So at the press conference, we, we did share not everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's more uh, uh, likely in store by the end of today that's not on the agenda. Uh, and, I, and, and maybe I'll be back on the show later today. Um, <laughs> we will have you back, we'll find out. <laughs> Come on, show us so, a little bit. Share um, a but in terms of, in terms of what, what, what we there. shared so far at the press conference, um, uh, it was centered around two key themes. I wanted to um, obviously talk about the array of things to come today, but focus on some of the things I'm directly involved in. One of which was NicoSwap, and the other are the number of things that are involved with, with here within Monaco. So in terms of NicoSwap, um, by way of name, Nico, um, and in the spirit of decentralization, Nico um, in ancient Greek means victory for the people. So we thought that was a fitting name for the platform. It's a decentralized exchange platform on uh, the digital that's blockchain, um, filled with um, uh, liquidity pool technology, automated market making technology. It's, it's uh, by way of comparison, digital bits is a version of, of a, let's say, a Uniswap but lower cost, faster, and so forth. And there's a number of organizations here today that will, are, are announcing that they're deploying on Nico, you know, bringing their token to the Digital Bits blockchain and, and launching um, on, on NicoSwap. So we're, I'm super excited about that. This is you know, part of evolution and part of fostering decentralization. Um, and so what that enables is by virtue of uh, being able to, again, help, helping other organizations getting their horse on the track. The common denominator for us um, is, is digital bits. It's, um, uh, you know, the fact that every application, every utility token, every NFT, you know, does require digital bits, including the digital bits cur uh, currency, to provide that security to, to be used for gas fees and, 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 and so on and so forth. So. Um, the blockchain itself, the crypto, it's kind of a common denominator beneficiary, uh, the one way you can kind of think of it. Um, but yeah, we shared uh, a lot around an eco swap, um, uh, what it looks like, and um, its key functionality, and, and who some of the organizations that are, are uh, on, on board day one. The other part of the press conference today we shared um, was more uh, Monaco centric, digital bits in Monaco, and this journey is just beginning. Uh, it's super humbling, it's super exciting for me uh, to be a part of it. Um, there is, again, in no real particular order, there's uh, an e-campus uh, that's focused around cybersecurity and, and blockchain education for both private sector and public sector. So, edu um, um, academia, so a uh, skills gap government. Issue, solve some skill gap issues. Correct, right. It, 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 um, an organization, a financial institution, a whole department needs to know more about blockchain, how they can leverage it. Um, Digital Bits um, is the blockchain um, that is forming the first part of the curriculum for this e-campus that's launching here in Monaco with uh, uh, an organization called uh, MVNE. The other thing uh, that we shared and announced uh, today is that um, the first, first and only sovereign cloud in Europe is the Monaco cloud. Uh, it was recently launched. Um, what makes it sovereign, in essence, is a few um, aspects of its characteristics, but digital bits blockchain nodes are being deployed in the Monaco cloud. Um, and so beyond the nodes that already exist, it's, um, the network is further being, let's say, hardened. It's not to bring you scale. In yeah. resiliency. You know, the whole thing around 
censorship resistance, right? The more nodes. Um, so so there's going to be some so Monaco there's, there's a huge strategic aspect to obviously deploying nodes in, in, in sovereign clouds. Um, and so in Europe, the first uh, for that is the Monaco cloud. Um, so we're really honored uh, to be working with the team there and MVE &E and so forth for that. And then, um, and then uh, as well, a um, number of months ago, uh, we began a journey um, with the Prince Albert uh, Monaco Foundation. Um, the, the chair president is, is uh, Prince Albert and um, uh, the uh, vice president CEO is uh, Olivia Wendam who was in attendance at, at, the, uh, at the press conference as well. And, um, and we unveiled um, the foundation's uh, platform entirely built on the Digital Bits blockchain, uh, utilizing the Digital Bits cryptocurrency um, as well as uh, NFT ticketing and so forth. Uh, so we unveiled that, we showcased that for, uh, for members of the press, um, how it will be used and, and so forth. What were some so, of the questions you got? Um, I mean, it, it went f everywhere from, um, uh, there was a regulatory uh, uh, regulation question uh, re related to Europe, um, to uh, questions around decentralization. What are what are we doing? How do we compare to uh, proof of work? You know, why why digital bits? You know, a big part of that is I think we have a lot of common values with um, um, the foundation, the Prince Albert Foundation, uh, around the environment being eco friendly and, and so on and so forth. And so um, um, questions of that sort. You know, how what are, you know what's the next chapter look like and and how, how um, is more and more decentralization, in my view, going to be fueled. And you said you got some announcements you can't talk about um, coming. Okay, so is that, what's that going to be related to? Can you give us a little bit of teaser on that? Is sure. it going to be, some, how big is it going to be massive? Is it the grand finale? Or is it? It's not a finale. <laughs> <laughs> it's the beginning, <laughs> the unveiling. It's an op unboxing of a new deal. What's, what's, what is it, the deal? Is it technology? Um, it is, uh, um, it, it's it's um, large uh, organization um, that um, is is leveraging uh, both um, the digital bits blockchain and digital bits <laughs> cryptocurrency. <laughs> Body swerved that one. Okay, good. Well, Al, <laughs> thanks for coming on, and congratulations. We will catch up with you either at the end of the day here on the live program, or we will be at the yacht club and Monaco Yacht Club tonight for the big event. Um, we hope to be live there, but if not, we will report on that. Yeah, thanks for having me, John. All right, it was great, great, great. Congratulations, Digital Bits is really rocking the world here in Monaco. Love the name, Digital Bits makes tons, tons of sense. Platform to enable applications. This is the future, you're going to start to see this decentralized model that kind of looks like cloud computing, but not. It's a technology enabling the creative and the, and this, and the application transformations to decentralization. It's coming, almost every single category will be decentralized. We'll be covering like a blanket on theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, theCUBE, thanks for watching.